Hello, I am Dr. David Bowman, and I wanted to share with you my thoughts about COVID-19, chronic diseases, and African-Americans. So Dr. Fauci recently had a statement and he mentioned how COVID-19 is putting a spotlight on the health disparities that African-Americans face. You know, one thing that is not being talked about much is that it's not just that African-Americans have more chronic diseases like obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, etc. We don't just happen to get these diseases one day, like all of a sudden we're walking down the street and, oh, diabetes, hi, I was hoping to avoid you, but oh, well, there you are. Oh, high blood pressure, I was hoping to avoid you, but there you are. It's not that it happens like that way. They, they come on slowly and they come on gradually. These chronic diseases have an underlying theme that they are caused in part due to oxidative stress and inflammation. COVID-19 then creates a storm of inflammation in the body called a cytokine storm. And as our bodies try so hard to fight this infection, it can cause friendly fire, so to speak, because our immune system is so revved up that it's you know shooting at the, the virus, but it also hits our lungs and other places in our body. So if you take that new storm of inflammation and put it on top of existing inflammatory medical conditions, then it leads to a higher risk of death and disease. So what's causing this inflammation in our bodies to begin with? So one thing is psychological stress. So some of this, much of this, are due to sources outside of our control. And many of these are specific to African-Americans. So, you know, systematic racism, discriminatory lending and housing practices, uh, limited health uh, care access, fewer Blacks have health insurance, you know, this, these social determinants of health, um, adverse childhood experiences, these psychological stresses actually do cause physical oxidative stress in our bodies, inflammation in our bodies. But it's also the psychological stress is in part due to things that are within our control. So it's how much we worry. I know for me, I had to stop watching so much news about this because I was getting stressed and angry about it. I was getting fearful. I, I was worrying a lot. Some of it comes from us thinking and worrying about the negative, focusing on the negative. Some of it is decisions of who we choose to hang out with. Some of it is who we choose to get in a relationship with. And then how we choose to relieve our stress. Are we doing it constructively or are we doing it destructively? So right now, during this pandemic, given the fact that COVID-19 is affecting the lungs, maybe now is a really good time to stop smoking. But then there's also other things that are at play here. So our diet, our diet can make the oxidative stress and inflammation better or worse. So there are a lot of food deserts where there are, you know, poor access to grocery stores in predominantly black neighborhoods. But what there are in those neighborhoods are a lot of corner stores and local takeout and fast food restaurants. Those may be readily available in predominantly black neighborhoods, but they don't carry a lot of healthy options. So these are the underlying factors that play a role in high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, heart disease, et cetera. But wait, no, you say, hold on. That comes from my genes. I mean, my, my parents had it, my, my siblings have it. So yes, absolutely, you are susceptible to it, but as it relates to actually getting the disease, there is a concept called epigenetics where we may be able to turn certain genes off with our lifestyle. I, I really don't wanna paint a picture of doom and gloom. That's not what I'm trying to do. You know. I, it's almost, I wish there was a way that we could address this, but there is. Now, clearly you can't stop being black. Uh, I, I get it. There are circumstances that are outside of your control that you can't change today or even this week. Um, many of the structural changes that we need to address health disparities are not gonna go away during the pandemic. We do need to fight them tooth and nail when the, the uh, disparity or the, the, the pandemic is over. 
So do we just throw up our hands at the disparities and let it continue to stress us? How about focusing on the things that are within our realm to do? Like the serenity prayer, you know, let us have the courage to change the things that we can. So one thing that we can do is adhere to the social distancing practices. Now, if we know now that COVID-19 is killing us at higher rates, then we absolutely need to adhere to social distancing. I know you're bored, you're getting cabin fever from being inside, and your, your place might be too small for the number of people who are there. So it's tempting to go out and hang out with your friends or other people who seem healthy as well. You wanna go play ball because you know exercise helps to reduce uh, chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. So you wanna go play ball, you wanna go ride your bike or, or have fun. Now, so clearly you do have freedom of choice, but what we don't have is freedom from consequences of those choices. The problem is that you don't know who is actually carrying the virus and who doesn't yet have symptoms. Even if you aren't likely to get too sick, you could bring it home to your parent or grandparents who could get majorly sick and maybe even die. And without that loved one around, life may get harder on you, which increases your psychosocial stress and the cycle continues. So what else can we do? We need to address psychological stress constructively and not destructively. In general, we should do that, but especially now. Then our diet and other lifestyle choices within what we can control and I'm, I'm going to talk about that on a different video um, on, on COVID-19 and lifestyle changes. But I will say this, though, that because African-Americans have worse health outcomes than others, maybe, just maybe, the standard American diet is not for us. It was already responsible for more disease and death before coronavirus ever hit our shores. So maybe we just need to load up on fruits and vegetables, nuts and other anti-inflammatory foods and avoid things that are gonna cause more oxidative stress to prevent us from having these chronic health conditions, to help to treat the chronic health conditions, to possibly reverse them and maybe protect ourselves from COVID-19. Now, as far as I know, there have not been any studies that show that a healthier diet will re directly reduce death and disease from COVID-19. Looking at the mechanism, it would likely help, but if nothing else, they will help with the chronic diseases that are making us more susceptible. So I'm gonna stop here for now. Uh, be sure to check out my next video on some affordable and reasonable lifestyle changes during the epidemic or the pandemic. But let me summarize and then leave you with these thoughts. So psychological stress, much but not all of which is out of our control, especially as African-Americans, leads to chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. Poor diet because of lack of healthy foods around us or because of the lack of healthy foods that we choose or, or both add, add even more oxidative stress. Both of these combined and piled up on top of genetic susceptibility leads to diseases such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and heart disease. Then COVID-19 comes and creates a storm of inflammation that is made even worse when you have a baseline level of inflammation that's already there, and then you have worse health outcomes. Now, the Surgeon General spoke to African-Americans and he said, you know, not to smoke or drink or do drugs and practice social distancing, and we need to do it for Big Mama and Pop Pop and Abuela and Granddaddy. Everyone, of course, everyone, no matter what your race, uh, but especially those at higher risk due to chronic disease, need to examine their health habits during a pandemic. We have a personal responsibility for other people, especially our loved ones. So if I'm in a race and I get the baton and I'm already behind everyone else, now is not the time to get down because it's not fair that I'm already behind. Yes, we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. Now is the time to put aside anything, any weights or anything else that would hinder us any further. I need to be more than a conqueror at this point. I need to do everything that's within my power to do right now to win. 
or in this case, to survive and advance. This is Dr. David Bowman. May God bless you. May God bless America. May God bless the world during the time of this pandemic.